Welcome back to Whitetail Season on AmericanHunter.org. It's the middle of the first week in August. And if you go back to the first episode, I was talking about a couple of bucks that I was trying to find, introduce the first two deer on my hit list. And uh, I promised you I was gonna go back over the next two deer this evening, but I might spend more time talking about those first two deer again, because believe it or not, uh, within the next two days after we filmed that episode, we actually found those bucks on a different soybean field and got quite a lot of footage of them. The one deer, uh, the one that we call Big, he was a mainframe 10 pointer with two big splits off his G2s back in the 2010 season. Well this year he's actually gone downhill, which is kind of surprising because he went from a five year old to a six year old and you'd think that he would you know, continue to get bigger. Well as a six year old he's probably lost about maybe 12 inches on his gross score. He went to a mainframe nine pointer and one of the big splits dropped off. And uh, he's in an area where we kind of expected to find him, not too far from where the deer was showing up on the trail camera pictures quite a bit last year. So that guy's still around, and, and I don't think that his summer range and his fall range are going to be that different. He's one of those bucks that just kind of seems like, you know, they, they overlap. We should be able to find that deer back again once he sheds his velvet and he breaks up his bachelor group. But it's the other half of the bachelor group that's really interesting this year. And that's that buck that we introduced last week that I called the double G4 buck. And he's really blown up. Uh, he had a big frame last year in 2010, if you remember the pictures we had of him. Uh, and he's actually bigger this year. Now he's a big mainframe 6x5. And he's got some big stickers, a big fork off one of his tines on his right beam. I mean, he's a, he's a true world-class deer. This is where we were getting pictures of him early in the fall last year, the same basic area where we filmed him uh, this summer. I just thought it was pretty ironic that we introduced those deer in the last episode. And here we are back on the next episode already. And we've already found them, and we've gotten quite a bit of footage of them over three different evenings. So uh, we'll talk some more about those deer as the season goes on, you know, how we're going to hunt these deer, uh, you know, what the next step is in patterning them. I'll just walk you through that whole process. And uh, you know, I mentioned we've got two more to talk about. When we get to the tree stand tonight, I'll maybe mention uh, a little bit more about those two deer. Uh, but tonight, we're actually going into a tree stand, one that we've hunted over the years. In fact, uh, it's the stand that Mike Sawyer killed a nice 10-pointer uh, out of last fall. Uh, so it's actually one of our hunting stands but it overlooks that whole bottom real well. It's more like an observation stand, really, uh, than the hunting stand. But apparently, you know, with Mike's kill, it does, it does work as a hunting stand as well. So that's where we're going. I brought the pole saw just in case there's some, some tree branches that have grown in. You know, we don't want to get up in there and then not be able to film out into the field. Right now, I'm talking loud because we're a half a mile probably from where we're going, but we're going to sneak our way in. And more importantly, we're going to sneak our way back out. So we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. Walking in, I'm going to stay right along the edge of this bean field, but coming out, I'm going to have to take the scenic, scenic route and drop down into this valley and stay away from this bean field because for sure there's going to be deer out here. Aaron filmed on this field about a week ago, and uh, there's quite a number of deer that came out onto it. Nothing of any real size. He got footage of a pretty cool nine-pointer with a fork off one of his tines that ran right to the base of his tree. Uh, so we know that that deer is on this field. And he's, he's been there a couple times that we've filmed here. My point is, Going in is going to be easy tonight. Coming out is going to be tough because we got to stay down in that valley the whole way back around. And this switchgrass uh, right here, that's going to block us uh, from the deer seeing us as we go through. So we should be able to get out pretty clean. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of work. Hopefully we can get into the stand without spooking anything that's out there, but I fully expect So much for not spooking anything. I was gonna say I fully expect to get in without spooking any deer, but we've already bumped into one, so we better keep moving. Normally we can get into the stand without bumping stuff, but there must have been one bedded right up here in this grass. We'll finally got set up here, and I had to go down and cut a tree down that was blocking my view. And when we hunt this in the fall, all the branches are off there, you know, so you can see clear to the other end of the field without any obstruction. But not this time of the year. So it's a good thing we had that pole saw. I promised that I was going to tell you about a couple more deer on my hit list for this year. And one of them is a deer that I nicknamed the G5 buck. I'll talk about him a little bit tonight, and uh, hopefully we can find him this summer, and I'll talk about him some more then. He was a 
six by five last year. He moved a lot during the daytime, and some deer are like that. You know, bucks have personalities, uh, kind of like people. And you know, if you're lucky enough to hunt in an area that doesn't get hunted so hard that all of the bucks that move during the daytime get killed when they're young, sometimes you'll get bucks that are older that move during the daytime. And the G5 buck was an example of that type of a deer, which makes him a lot of fun to hunt. Certainly not the biggest deer around, but I'm excited to see what he looks like because I think he was just a four-year-old last year, so he might have made a big jump this year. And if he did, I mean, there's no telling how big he might be. He was probably upper 160s last year, which would make him, you know, a pretty solid deer this year for sure. And there's another one. It's a buck that lives here. Seems like he lives here during the late season. The only times we've ever seen this deer and the only time we've ever gotten him on the trail cameras is late season. We've been, we've been following this deer for three or four years now. Uh, I think he's either he's either going to be five or six years old this year. And uh, he started out as a big eight-pointer when he was just a three-year-old. And now he's a big nine-pointer, but he's a big nine-pointer. He's pushing 180 inches as a nine-pointer. At least he was last year. We've got one of his sheds that scored uh, 82 or 83 inches on the one five-point side. So he's a he's a heck of a big deer. Uh, we're going to try to find that deer. That's the the magnificent four that I'm going after this season. And I'm sure if this season's like the rest of them, we'll stumble onto other bucks along the way that are easier to hunt. And we're, we're definitely opportunists. You know, I've got two tags that I can use during the rot as a landowner here in Iowa, which means that if any good solid mature buck comes by, I'm gonna shoot. I'm not gonna hold off for just one of these four that, that I've got on my list. So it should be an action-packed year. I'm gonna round out this evening here. Hopefully something good will come out. And if it does, we'll show it to you. And I'll wrap up in a little bit. All I've seen tonight is two does and a fawn. It's pretty disappointing for this spot. I really thought we were going to see some nice bucks down in this bottom. Could be something with the weather maybe. We heard some thunder earlier, so there's some kind of a front rolling in here. But uh, we'll come back again and film this again sometime in the future. We're gonna be back again next week. And we're gonna be back again every week until the end of the deer season. But next week I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we can take from these summer sightings. Like these two bucks that we filmed this past week, these two giant deer. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what realistically and practically uh, I can take from that that's going to help me to kill one of those two bucks this fall. So uh, we're going to keep filming. We're going to go after those deer some more and we're going to try to find a couple more the other two bucks on my hit list and maybe find a couple more big ones just for fun. So uh, come back again and join us next week for the next episode of Whitetail Season right here at AmericanHunter.org.